You've done well. Perhaps too well. It may soon be you, Zhang Liao, standing at the forefront of the armies of Wei. What does strength mean to you? Strength is the ability to make that which you believe in a reality. to give my life for the good of my kingdom. I, Zhang Liao, shall crush all those who oppose me! What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Out channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as the latest game. Starting off the top three, we have one of the most mighty and brave warriors within the game, Zhang Liao. Zhang Liao is a general who served under three different lords before serving Lu Bu. When his master surrendered, Zhang Liao swore his loyalty to Cao Cao, under whom his career skyrocketed. He is most famous for his battles at Hefei and successfully defending the castle with just a few hundred men. When he perished due to illness, the emperor wept for him, and after his death, he has been lauded as one of the five generals of Wei. Romance of the Three Kingdoms emphasizes his service under Lu Bu and dubs him one of his eight generals. The novel also heavily stresses his brief historical friendship with Guan Yu, and his son is Zhang Hu. Before we jump into how Zhang Liao has changed within the series, take a look at the popularity poll to see why Zhang Liao cracks the top three at number three. In the first popularity poll, Zhang Liao impressively breaks the top five with 2,324 votes out of a total of over 75,000 votes, putting him at the fourth position. In the second popularity poll, he's going to drop down to the 17th position. And then in my personal ranking, he's also going to hold the position at number three. So for me personally, Zhang Liao is going to come in at number three. And if you've seen some of my other videos discussing like Taishi Si or Shu Huang or other characters that have similar traits to Zhang Liao, it should be no surprise that Zhang Liao is up here at number three for me. His feats within the game are just really, really cool and he really embodies the warrior's way within the Dynasty Warriors series and the Dynasty Warriors series is about legendary warriors from this time and because of the way Zhang Liao is presented within the games it's hard for me not to like him this actually makes him the highest ranking Wei character on my list and I can't say enough good things about the character Zhang Liao he's always going to remain one of my favorites from the Wei Kingdom and one of my favorites in general because of who he is what he represents his weapon style and just everything about the character I just connect with really really well the humility the honor the loyalty and doing everything he can to become a better warrior is always something that I admire within a character and Zhang Liao to me is the epitome of what a warrior should be. A very fun character, a lot of fun to use and I always enjoy seeing how his story develops within all the games. I love seeing his relationship with Lu Bu, it's one of the things that also draw me to the character is that within all the chaos that's going on and of course what people see Lu Bu as, Zhang Liao is one of the few that can see that small hint of honor that Lu Bu has and that's what keeps him next to him all the way up until Lu Bu's end. We'll jump more into all of his relationships towards the latter part of the video but before we do that let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about Zhang Liao for people who don't know. So like I said Zhang Liao was a Chinese military general serving under the warlord Cao Cao formerly a subordinate of other warlords such as Dong Zhuo and Lu Bu. Zhang Liao joined Cao Cao 
after the downfall of Lu Bu at the Battle of Xia Pi. Since then, he would participate in many of Cao Cao's military campaigns, and he is best known for his pivotal role in the successful defense of Hefei from the forces of the warlord Sun Quan. Within the game, Zhang Liao is a man of honor and will stay virtuous to the very end no matter what obstacles come his way. Usually calm and just, he is also capable of turning into a fierce beast during battle. He believes that he can only find his true purpose in life during war and walks the warrior's path. While serving Lu Bu, Zhang Liao has the utmost faith in his master's more valiant traits, and he is praised as one of the land's greatest warriors by Lu Bu, and the two generals mutually respect each other and their strength. So Zhang Liao during this time was a very pivotal general for Lu Bu's forces and then of course Cao Cao's forces as well. Zhang Liao himself just had an indomitable presence about himself and whenever he took the battlefield people really took notice of how strong and capable he was as a warrior. I really like this story in Dynasty Warrior 6 where they took the time to really proclaim the doubts that Zhang Liao has as a character and the doubts that he has within himself. Within that personality trait this is where Zhang Liao's humility and honor comes out because no matter how talented or high ranking Zhang Liao becomes, he still remains humble throughout his military career. And that's a quality I can really respect among a character because someone like Zhang Liao who is obviously very talented, obviously very skilled, embodies the warrior's path and is the true meaning of a warrior during this time, can still remain humble and honorable and really bounces out into a really well-liked character. It was no surprise to me to see Zhang Liao so high up within the rankings because of this personality trait and of course all the things that make Zhang Liao Zhang Liao. His weapon style is really cool, his appearance is really nice. It's just a really well constructed character and I've always enjoyed playing with Zhang Liao. But Zhang Liao played a really pivotal role in the early stages of Cao Cao's campaign and would be there all the way up to really stabilize his hold in the central plane and then of course playing that pivotal defensive role during the Battle of Hefei which we'll talk about more towards the latter part of the video. And with that being said we're going to go ahead and jump into how Zhang Liao has changed within the series starting off with his appearance. So Zhang Liao's appearance within most of the game is actually pretty good. There's actually, I don't, can't really think of a game that I actually dislike. He actually looks pretty good in pretty much all the games. Even from the jump from Dynasty Wars 5 to Dynasty Warriors 6, he still looks really, really good. Dynasty Wars 6 is one of my favorite iterations of Zhang Liao, not just in terms of looks, but appearance, and of course his personality and everything else as well. Appearance-wise, though, this character is really well constructed, and I can't really complain about the way he looks at all. Dynasty Warriors 9, they kind of go back to that Dynasty Warriors 6 look a little bit. And then in the pre-Dynasty Warriors 6 era, I thought he looked really, really good. I thought his appearance always looked pretty good and overall he's just a really good looking character. Now moving on to his weapon style, his weapon style within most of the games is actually pretty good. In the first few games he's playable he gets the Gulian Dao. So the Gulian Dao is basically a huge blade that is closely resembled to a Guan Dao. The only difference in the two blades, the actual blade resembles more of a sickle than it does like a regular blade. In terms of looks I would consider it more of a Guan Dao but in terms of fighting style I would consider the weapon to be more of a spear and it's just a really fun style to play with. I've always been a fan of the two-handed weapons and Zhang Liao's weapon is no exception. A very very fun play style to play with in the earlier games and he had a huge AoE attack on his fifth charge attack. Can't complain about it at all. It was a pretty intimidating weapon to go up against and it was a really fun style to play with. Now moving on to Dynasty Warriors 6 through 9 he gets the same weapon which is the dual G or the twin axes. Now this weapon style was pretty fun to play with in the first game it was playable. Dynasty Warriors 6 I had a lot of fun playing with Zhang Liao. It was one of my favorite styles from that game and I enjoy using Zhang Liao with that style. Dynasty Warriors 7, 8, and 9, it relatively is okay. Didn't have as much fun with it, but it was still pretty fun to use. I don't know, something about the weapon in the latest games just doesn't feel quite the same. It's a little slower, I think. It just doesn't feel as good as it did in Dynasty Warriors 6. The flow is a little bit off. I thought the weapon was the best in Dynasty Warriors 6, and I thought it got worse throughout the later st installments of the game. Dynasty Warriors 9 was okay. It was a little easier to use with the flow attacks and everything, but I think for me personally, Dynasty Warriors 6 was the best style for that weapon, and it was a lot of fun to play with. His Musao attacks in most of the games are pretty good. Can't complain about most of the Musao attacks. The earlier games with the Gulian Dao was really, really good. Very big AoE attacks. And it did a great job clearing out enemies. And it was a really good Musao attack for the earlier games. Dynasty Warriors 6 through 9 with the dual G. Dynasty Warriors 6 was pretty good. I really enjoyed the Musao attack for the Dynasty Warriors 6 weapon. Dynasty Warriors 7, 8, and 9. His Musao attacks were okay. Nothing too crazy. I like the second Musao attack where he kind of stabs him. He like turns around and then the guy tries to hit him. 
and he kind of just like counters him with his back turn, which just adds on to Zhang Liao's presence and his bad assery, which is really cool to see. But I thought the other two were okay. It was decent. I like the Gulian Dao more for Zhang Liao. Or if they stick with the dual G, somehow find a way to use a similar flow or similar combo that he had in Dynasty Warriors 6. But other than that, I didn't really find the weapon to be too fun in the later game. Now, moving on to Zhang Liao's voice acting, we're going to start off with Dynasty Warriors 3. He said to bloody their nose, then pull back and wait for reinforcements. And I personally liked the way Zhang Liao sounded in Dynasty Warriors 3. I had no problem with the way he sounded. It fit him pretty well. It just kind of completed that package of a good character, and I didn't really complain about the way he sounded in Dynasty Warriors 3. Dynasty Warriors 4 and 5, we get the same one. You are no match for the strength and skill of Zhang Liao. And again, I can't really complain about the voice acting in Dynasty Warriors 4 and 5. It fit him pretty well. He goes from... The previous sound to more of a very commander type voice, very commanding presence. It really comes through his voice acting in Dynasty Wars 4 and 5. You can really tell he's not just a brave warrior anymore. He's a leader and he's someone that is supposed to be taken seriously and it's really shown through with that voice acting in Dynasty Wars 4 and 5. Next up we have Dynasty Wars 6 through 8. Tell me commander, all my skills. Do they differ from all of the tyrants we have known? Which I also really like because I think it was a good blend between the brave warrior and also moments when he's commanding and being a leader. I really enjoyed the voice acting for him in Dynasty Wars 6 through 8. Can't complain about it too much. It might be my favorite. It's hard to really say. Dynasty Wars 4 through 5 was good and Dynasty Wars 3 was also good as well. And then finishing up with Dynasty Warriors 9. It was nothing. And I really have to admit, I was a bit arrogant myself as well. I honestly can't complain about this one either. It's not the best, obviously, but it's still pretty good for Zhang Liao for who he is, and it fits him pretty well as a character. But with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the final parts of the video for Zhang Liao. We have his significant battles, his relationships, and his death. Let's start off with his death. So Zhang Liao's death within the series is not mentioned or it's not really noted. The only game he is explicitly killed in is Dynasty Warrior 7. It's a battle against Sun Chuan, and it's him and Ding Fong and Lian Shi, and he's got his twin axes. He goes after Sun Chuan. He's got Ding Fong and Leon Shi that blocks one of his axes, and then Sun Chuan just comes in for the stab to kill him. That is the only game where he actually gets killed by another officer. In all the other games, it's either not mentioned, and according to historical records, he actually dies of illness. One thing I did want to mention about his death was pretty interesting to read about was when Cao Pi found out that Zhang Liao was sick. He ended up sending an imperial physician to treat him. And then later on, before Zhang Liao had recovered, Cao Pi actually visited him and gave him an imperial robe as a gift and ordered his servants to prepare him an imperial cuisine. After he would improve significantly, Zhang Liao would then return to his garrison. But then after going to battle again with Sun Quan, his condition would worsen to the point that it ended up killing him. Cao Pi cried when he learned of Zhang Liao's death. And it was kind of interesting to read that because within the games, you wouldn't really notice the relationship between Zhang Liao and Cao Pi. I guess we'll talk about his relationships right away as well. Hey, the relationship with Cao Pi and Zhang Liao is not really a thing of the games. I don't think they really share much of anything. No real cutscenes, no real events, but nothing of significance to where you would think that they were that close, like to the point where Cao Pi is crying when he found out Zhang Liao died. But that's how Zhang Liao dies within history, but then within Dynasty War 7, he actually gets killed by Sun Quan. Now moving on to his significant battles really quickly, he does have quite a few battles under his name, but the main two ones I want to talk about is the Battle of Jiapi and the Battle of Hefei. So starting with the Battle of Jiapi, it's a pretty significant battle for Zhang Liao because this is when he joins Cao Cao's forces. And you also get to see another glimpse of Zhang Liao's personality come out when he's either responding to Lu Bu's outbursts or he's responding to Cao Cao directly. And you can see within his answers of what he's saying is that he's a very humbled and honorable character even in the face of death. And that's what leads Cao Cao to end up to recruiting this character because Zhang Liao in the face of death understands that he lost. He accepts his defeat, he accepts his loss and he's ready to die. So a very important battle because you get to see a little glimpse of that personality come out. And then the battle of Hefei, extremely important battle for Zhang Liao. This is his moment. This is where he reigns terror on the Wu forces, killing Tai Chi Si. And this is where Zhang Liao basically becomes a legend. During the battle of Hefei, it is said that Zhang Liao and Li Dian defeated an enemy force of 100,000 with only 800 foot soldiers. There had never been anything like this before in the history of warfare. This is a feat unlike no other within the series. Zhang Liao was able to hold down the territory of Hefei with Yue Jin and Li Dian, and they were able to hold back the overwhelming Wu forces and force them to retreat. There are many cutscenes revolved around this battle of what Zhang Liao is able to accomplish, forcing Sun Quan to retreat during the battle, destroying the bridge, cutting off his retreat, forcing him to jump over it, and completely turning around a complete disadvantage into a win and victory for the Wei forces. Because of the leadership and the ferocity that Zhang Liao showed during this battle, this basically etched his name into legend 
And due to that alone, up until Zhang Liao's death, Sun Quan was extremely afraid to attack with Zhang Liao being there. But very important battle for Zhang Liao. It's really the battle that makes him who he is and what he's really known for is because of this battle. Now moving on to the last part of the video, we have his relationships and we're going to start off with his more minor ones. So the first three I want to talk about is Sha Ho Dun, Sha Ho Yuan, and Sao Ren. I'm going to put all these three together because they have a very similar relationship with Zhang Liao. It's all one of mutual respect. And the reason I say that is because of Zhang Liao's early insertion into Sao Sao's forces, he's able to build that bond and of course receive the accolades and people seeing how talented he is from these characters. These three characters aren't super close to him, but they're able to rely on him to you know, watch their back. Whatever it is that these guys need, these three characters who are the original members of Sao Sao's forces is able to actually implicitly end up trusting someone like Zhang Liao who came from another force. It's briefly highlighted in most of the games between these characters and it's just really cool to see the mutual respect for these people because these are the three original retainers, some of the you know highest generals among Cao Cao's forces. And Zhang Liao is able to receive their respect and admiration because of the talent and skill he provides and perhaps the path that he walks as a warrior. And then briefly, I want to mention his relationship with Shu Huang. Very similar relationship to him and the first three that I just mentioned, but it's a little bit closer with Shu Huang and Zhang Liao because Zhang Liao recognizes a similar trait in Shu Huang that he has within himself. He recognizes Shu Huang as a kindred spirit who also aims to follow the path a warrior would take. But they have a relationship a little more more significant than the first three because they do have special dialogue with each other in Dynasty Warriors 6 when they're around each other. Now moving on to his relationship with Ga Ning, I want to mention it very quickly because it's very minor. The only reason I bring it up is because during the Battle of Hefei, usually Zhang Liao gets compared to Ga Ning and in some of the games they have a little bit of interaction with each other. The earlier games not so much but in the later games they kind of dabble into their rivalry just a little bit. It's nothing too significant, but it's definitely there just because of the comparison at the Battle of Hefei. Now moving on to his relationship with Lu Bu. So Lu Bu's relationship with Zhang Liao is a very interesting one. It's again, one of mutual respect. It's one of you don't really see really at all within the game. Lu Bu acknowledging and giving praise to another character within the game is really unheard of because Lu Bu doesn't really respect or acknowledge anyone. So Zhang Liao being able to receive that from a character like Lu Bu is an astounding achievement i think personally i believe that zhang liao idolizes lu bu of someone of talent and of course strength because zhang liao walks the warrior's path he has a similar mindset to that of lu bu and he can see those small traits of honor that lu bu possesses that allows zhang liao to continue to follow him up until his death now i would say at the moment of lu bu's death or when he's being brought before Sao Sao, i would say zhang liao might lose a little bit of that respect for lu bu because he's able to basically speak up at this point and in a way scold Gold Lu Bu for his unhonorable behavior. But up until that point, Zhang Liao and Lu Bu had a very good relationship, and I always enjoy watching their relationship develop within the games because Lu Bu doesn't have many relationships, and it's just really cool to see that he actually treasures and respects another character within the game. Now, moving on to the relationship with Guan Yu, a similar relationship I would say with him and Guan Yu is similar to that of him and Lu Bu. I would say it's more of a genuine friendship, though, because Guan Yu has similar traits to Zhang Liao, and that's where these two really connect. They have same principles, same morals, same mindset on honor and humility and being an honorable person, walking the warrior's path, doing the things that they believe is right. And within pretty much all the games, you can see some sort of cutscene or some sort of relationship being developed between these two characters. And it's another relationship that I always enjoy to watch. You have two characters that are on two different teams that have the same morals and values. So when they do battle each other, when they do come face to face with each other, it's an honorable and respectful fight. And it's one that I can get behind. I enjoy watching these two honorably fight it out because it's two warriors basically shaking hands and coming to a warrior's agreement that we're going to fight, we're going to do the best we can, and may the best warrior come out. Definitely something I can respect, definitely something I admire within a character, and that's why Zhang Liao is so high up for me. Now moving on to his last three relationships, we have the most significant ones. We have Cao Cao, Yue Jin, and Li Dian. So starting off with Cao Cao, of course he has a close relationship with Cao Cao because he's the one that brings him into the forces of Wei. Of course, he sees his potential, his talent, his skill, and Zhang Liao in return for, you know, Cao Cao's generosity and acknowledgement of his skill and talent, which Zhang Liao, again, doesn't believe he has at times, follows Cao Cao to the end and will do whatever he is asked of. That's why when he asked him to go to Hefei and defend against the overwhelming forces of Sun Quan, instead of Zhang Liao panicking and becoming 
worried or freaking out. He remains calm. He remains stoic. And he turns into a fierce beast in order to take down Sun Quan's forces. After this battle, obviously because of what he was able to accomplish, Cao Cao is going to treasure this character even more. And I would say they shared a pretty good relationship all the way up until Cao Cao's death. Now moving on to his last two relationship with Yue Jin and Li Dian. These two were there with him thick and thin through the Battle of Hefei. These guys are the trio at Hefei defending their territory, doing whatever it takes in order to help each other out. I really like the relationship that these three have. It's just a really good relationship to see. Zhang Liao kind of leads by example, even though Yue Jin and Li Dian have been there longer than Zhang Liao. They both, I would say, look up to him in a way. And because of the ferocity, because of the courage and the acts of bravery that he's able to display to them, they're able to really trust and he's able to gain their respect pretty quickly. Zhang Liao and Li Dian, at least within Dynasty Warriors 9, share a bit of tension with each other because Li Dian is still upset of the fact that Zhang Liao was part of a group that killed his uncle. But after the Battle of Hefei, after being in a situation where it requires them to work together or they're, they're going to die, they end up becoming closer together and Li Dian ends up apologizing and realizes that working together with Zhang Liao, they actually were a pretty good team. But Zhang Liao has a pretty good relationship with these two characters, very good trust among these two. And almost in a way, when he's talking to like Yue Jin, he can see glimpses of himself within this character because Yue Jin is very similar in the fact that he's very humble, doesn't believe he's very talented. And Zhang Liao is astonished to hear that because he can see the talent in Yue Jin, but can't see that talent within himself. But after the Battle of Hefei, nobody else really doubts the abilities and skill of Zhang Liao, and he becomes a legend of the Wei forces. But a very close relationship with those two. Legendary battle that they took a part in. And with that being said, that's pretty much all I have for Zhang Liao here. An extremely capable character. I always enjoyed watching his story develop and how he goes about walking down the warrior's path. Again, Zhang Liao is a very honorable and humble character. And these are just traits that I've always enjoyed within the character. He's going to remain one of my favorite characters in the game because of the way he is, because of the way he looks. Hopefully they go back to his Gulian Dao that he had in the previous game because I really enjoyed that for Zhang Liao. It was a pretty fun weapon style or if they find a way to incorporate his old move set from Dynasty Warriors 6 that would be really cool as well. But the character overall is a really awesome character. He's my favorite way character and one of my favorites of all time and I will always enjoy playing through with him. But with that being said guys let me know what you guys think about the legendary Zhang Liao down below. Do you guys like him? Do you guys use him? Let me know down below. But if you guys enjoyed the video definitely appreciate a like, comment, or subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. Whoa.